Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning stream for April 26, 2020. If you're with us for the first time, uh, I offer you a special greeting, a big thank you for being with us and I pray that you will be touched by our message and as we come to communion this morning with Pastor Nate, who's actually going to do that for us, I pray that you will be uh, really, really moved and really touched by the Lord as, as you engage. I'm sharing a message in a little while um, called uh, The New Regime, Grace. And we're going to look at the really the next stage in what I've been preaching since prior to Easter and, uh, and over Easter as well about the resurrected Jesus. And this morning we're going to look at the regime of grace that has been brought into being as a result of the resurrection of Christ. So for now, why don't we hand over to uh, Pastor Nate, who will lead us in communion. Make sure you've got your bread and your juice ready. And uh, Pastor Nate, over to you. Well, hi everyone. I'm Nate. I'm part of the team here at Wellington CRC and we're going to take communion together now. I'll share some thoughts first, but if you haven't already, feel free to prepare yourself with uh, some bread and some grape juice, drink, whatever you may have as we share communion together. Anyone's welcome to participate as long as you understand what you're doing and you're a believer that you know that Jesus died for your sins and that's what we're remembering right now in this moment. Isolation's certainly been uh, challenging and I've taken great encouragement knowing that I'm not going through it alone, that uh, we're all going through it together. But I've also taken encouragement that there are so many uh, great characters from the Bible that have gone through isolation. I just think of Joseph and, and how he was down in the well. I mean, that's a form of isolation. I think of uh, I think of Moses and, and how he went out into the wilderness and isolation again and, and and John the Baptist, he lived in the wilderness, it's isolation, and and Jesus, and how he went out into the wilderness for a period of time, and, and isolation. And I and I suppose during this time, I want to just encourage you that there is something for you in this time. That God has something for you. That there is a, a reason and a purpose. And we're going to uh, focus a little bit on God's plan as we just read a little bit about this. So, if you have uh, got your Bible with you, turn to Luke. 22, and I'll read the story of the Last Supper. Luke 22, verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? They asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room? where I may eat the Passover with you, my disciples. He will show you a large upper room, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his disciples reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant and my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with me at the table. I find it interesting that God had a plan right from the beginning. That his plan was to see that he would have a relationship with you and I, and that was going to come through the cross. You know, we're also remembering at this time the Anzacs and, and uh, the terrible, the horrible price that was paid for our freedom. That was a, a, that that we have freedom today because of many people who gave up their lives, and Jesus also gave up his life that we would have eternity. We have eternity on the other side of death because of what Jesus did, and we're going to remember that. Uh, this morning. I suppose one of the thoughts I, I realize is that God's plan was right from the beginning, even when the disciples said, where do you want us to make uh, preparations? What do you want us to do? He had a plan. He had in place. Um, he had the place in mind. The preparations were, were there. And uh, God has a plan for us. He has a plan for us in this time. He has a plan for us after the lockdown. He has a plan for your life. And it's found when we come to the cross, when we understand that we are children of God, that he has paid the price for us. You know, I was talking to a friend recently, and he reminded me of two things, that 
Salvation is number one, impossible. You know, when it comes to the Christian life, it's impossible. And number two, it's effortless that Jesus did it all. So if you have uh, your bread and grape juice, let's take these together right now. And I'm just going to give thanks. Thank you, Father, just so much for everything you've done. That it is impossible for us to create our own salvation, to find our own way to heaven without you. It is impossible. And I just thank you that we get to live a life in relationship with you because of what was done on the cross, that we have a life of purpose, a life of hope, a life of peace because of what you have done. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, for being raised to life, Lord, that you that you are, you conquered death and that you have conquered uh, death on our behalf, that we would know, would know eternity, that we would know relationship and life. I just pray, Father, that you would just uh, bless right now every person as we take communion together, bless this bread and this... Um, juice that represents your blood, this bread that represents your body in Jesus' name. Let's eat and drink, uh, friends, as we remember what Jesus did on the cross. It said in Luke 22 that after supper, he um, took up the grape juice, took up some wine, and remember, this is the blood that was poured out for me, for you. And so let's um, remember that together. Thank you, Jesus, for this victory that we have, that we have new life in you. And we just remember that together all, a, all across Wellington in our different homes. I pray for your blessing upon every family and every every child, every, every man, every woman, Lord, that, that we would live a life no matter where we are, um, completely sold out for you because of what you did, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, God bless you guys, and I uh, look forward to catching up with you soon. Thanks.